Hello, everybody. I really like playing in Space Engineers. It's very relaxing to build starships. And I wanted to talk a little bit about what I really like in Space Engineers. The pieces that I really like are the way that you have the actual game constraints, like engine speed and how well your armor works, and the way that you combine that with your own imaginary constraints, such as number of crew, and how well it works on long voyages, and whether it can warp into space or whatever. So you've got these two kinds of constraints, and it's really entertaining to allow players to build whatever they can think of as a constraint. So, you know, the, in the Vanguard, which I built, it's over here, it's a small, large ship. It's got a number of crew. Of course, it's never going to have any crew. There's no such thing as crew in this game. Uh, and it's got places to live. Of course, there's no such thing as living. There's no such thing as sleeping. There's no such thing as changing clothes or going to the bathroom. But all of those are available on the Vanguard. And I think it makes the ship feel really cool and interesting to have put those constraints in, in addition to constraints like how fast it can move and how far it can fire. Now, this is the Ghost Hunter. It's not ready yet. I haven't finished the, uh, the, the, and the uh, drones. On the back there are some drones, and uh, they need a lot of work. But the Ghost Hunter itself is basically a U-boat. It exists not to attack enemies, but to nestle into an asteroid, and then uh, let those drones go off and do their thing. So it's kind of a pirate or a privateer. And uh, because, of, because it is a small ship, the drones also are small ships, and they can lock into place using merge blocks. So, if we're talking about the constraints of the game, what I've done is I've said, well, there are no moving parts here. There is no, uh, there are no, no levers, no, uh, no, no gears. It's all locked together as one solid mass, and that means that the ship handles very well and doesn't ever break, no matter how fast you turn. From the constraints perspective, though, the interior of this is the most fun, because the constraints I've introduced to try and force my uh, interior to be interesting have really made this design a lot of fun to build. So let's go ahead and go inside, go down through this. I'm going to be facing backwards just so that you can start by seeing the engines, the main engines. So as you can see, you can actually reach the all 12 of the main engines from inside. So if any of them get damaged, you can pull out your welder and you can weld them from inside the ship, and if they're destroyed, you can even replace them from in here. That's uh, a big deal for me in small ships. In large ships, this would be annoying, but in small ships, it works really, really well. And if I turn around, boom, boom, you can see there's actually quite a bit of space. And the space is, again, framed by more engines that you can repair. Off to the sides, I've got all the cargo. Now, another constraint that, all, that actually exists in the game, the drones require large conveyors because they have large conveyor weaponry. So I had to have these large conveyors in the back of the ship, and what I've done is I've set them up as kind of a pretty little feature instead of being uh, incredibly ugly or running along the outside of the ship. As I move forward, you can see that there's a little med bay and I haven't really decided what goes on the other side. And you can pass through. This is an airlock, so you should close it behind you. We're not going to bother. And this has a crew of five. You can see there are two bunks on each side. And, of course, a captain's quarter. The captain's quarter is fully featured, except it doesn't have a shower, but it has everything else you might need. And I've even hooked up plumbing to the sink and the toilet, even though, of course, there's no reason for that to actually be the case in the game world. Um, but it was fun to build, and you can see the captain has a small but nice little cabin where he can look out onto the stars. Over here is a locker where you can change and uh, access the braking engine. So, uh, once again, you can access all eight of the braking engines from inside. And the double-paned glass again, looking out into space. The other side is kind of similar, except that instead of a captain's room, we've got a canteen. And again, Space Engineers has no concept of food or ovens or any of that. So this is just me inventing a space and filling it with something I think should be there. And if we look in here, you can see that there's a number of uh, features that look vaguely like stuff that might be in a kitchen. And over here are some gaming machines. Let's play some Pac-Man. Doop, 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 doop. 
The crew is expected to share one shower, not at the same time, unless they're very friendly. But this is full function, in that you can go in and you can close the door behind you. And you can do whatever you need to in here. It's, it's, it's pretty cramped, but it's a small ship, what do you expect? And then here's the bathroom that the four crew members share. The captain has his own. You can access the main reactors from in here. There are only two main reactors. There are no small reactors or other large reactors on this ship. The drones have their own small reactors, but not very many of them. So this is the power that the ship gets. And it relies on battery banks managed by an AI to fill in the rest of the gaps. This is the still unfinished command area. And you can see that these are the AI. Uh, with their timers. The AI blocks here are not just for looks. These AI blocks actually do host AIs. Uh, right now I've got Freya who manages the oxygen and the batteries. Uh, and then I have um, Tyr who draws the ship and monitors damage. I've got Ratatosk who does all of the sound effects uh, and basically acts as the voice of the AIs. And I have Njord, who is still in development, but he handles all of the autopilots. Uh, and Njord's capability is especially important to the Ghost Hunter, because it's really easy to accidentally send drones off, uh, and then accidentally go further than the antenna range and lose the drone forever. Njord can actually detect when that happens and hit reverse, um, but I'm not ready to show that off yet. There are three chairs here, because there are two drones and, of course, the ship itself. You can see that we've got Tyr drawing away in the corner. I'm thinking about some new drawing algorithms, because this small ship is uh, really, really taking up a lot of that terminal's uh, capabilities. It's pushing the edge of, of maximum text amount. So, this ship is significantly smaller than the Vanguard, even though it has the same crew but it's still a pretty big ship. If you compare it to that fighter, the blue fighter that I've put off to the side, you can see that the blue fighter could fit inside of the command area here. One of the other things you might notice is that this ship appears to be made entirely out of light armor. Um, and that is true, at least for the top side. This is not a ship that is intended to engage the enemy. It's intended to nestle up against an asteroid. Here's the thing, though. If it's nestling up against an asteroid, it's not going to be nestling right side up. It's going to be nestling... ...like this. So if that large ship was our asteroid, this is what we would be doing. Because of that, it's actually this underside that's exposed, and the underside is just tremendous. Um, it is a lot of heavy armor, and it's actually a composite armor. And we're going to be discussing composite armor a lot, and we're going to be testing it, we're going to be firing things at it, it's going to be a lot of fun. Let's go have a look at our composite armor. As you probably know, composite armor is a term for armor that is made out of more than one material, or is made out of more than one material. By far the most effective composite armor in the most recent versions of Space Engineers uh, is wheel armor like this. Wheel armor makes it so that you can take a lot more damage, but is a lot lighter than having two layers of heavy armor. I did some testing earlier. Heavy armor with a wheel behind it took six rocket shots from a small ship to break through, whereas two layers of heavy armor took five. And this is significantly lighter. Two layers of heavy armor is, is almost twice as heavy. It's around twice as heavy, depending on how you build it. So even though this ship is a small ship, it has an astounding amount of damage capacity on the bottom here. And that's because we didn't armor any of the other locations at all. The backside has just a little bit of armor so that you can run away, but the top and the sides are pretty much unarmored. And there are two turrets here which you can either leave on automatic or have your crew members pilot as, as needs arise. Uh, and now as you can see the drones are completely unfinished but they are going to be armored on the front and bottom because they do have forward-facing weapons and they will be attacking on a forward vector, so they are going to have to have forward armor. But they're, not, they're nowhere near ready yet. Um, they're just placeholders at the moment. Just uh, with engine load testing, really. So let's go ahead and show off how effective this armor is. 
and we'll do that by firing off a lot of rockets. These are small ship rockets. Now, small ship rockets aren't the most powerful rockets in the world, but they will do. Um, so if we are going to do this, let's just go ahead and find a spot. Let's say right here. I think we blew up our own ship. Nope, we're definitely hitting. So you can see that we're getting a lot of scrap, but there's no discernible damage happening here. We did take out the turret, but I can't really armor the turret. Anyone keeping track of the number of shots? Because that's how many shots it takes to actually strip away one layer of heavy armor when it's backed up by a wheel. You can see that we still haven't actually penetrated over here, and the wheel is still intact here. We did lose a lot of sound blocks. I think we actually ruptured the interior hole w with that last rocket shot, uh, and that actually did go through to the bridge. So I would consider that to be an actually effective shot. Um, it is a hull breach, although it is not a particularly, you know, it didn't hit a reactor or anything. If we're going to attack something that seems like it's probably more um, important, we could go after the reactors, although where are they? Hmm. Hard to tell, isn't it? Well, let's go ahead and try and blow away just this general area here. So the engines did get uh, hit, but they're not down. They're still running. So these are rockets, and I think most of you are probably familiar with how small ships normally react to rockets. I'll give you a hint. They die. So the fact that this ship can take four, six, ten rockets before suffering any appreciable damage at all is, um, is pretty overpowered, and that's the power you can get out of using wheels as armor. So you can see that focusing fire, you have to focus fire for quite a while to even start to break through, and this area here is actually the lightest armored area on the bottom of the ship. I mean, aside from the unfinished part. So let's just go ahead and... This is the sort of fire you might expect to see when you're actually engaging. By the way, if Njord was turned on, he would have already started to speed away. So, let's just show you. This is, like, zero damage. We took some armor damage, but we haven't taken any appreciable interior damage at all. And I can show you that by actually going inside. You can see that the extent of our damage here is that one of our oxygen containers is on fire. We have a couple of hull breaches, but because of the wheels being placed where they are, we actually have no damage to any of the components in here. The reactors are completely safe. Even the bathroom is completely safe. We did lose two of our AI cores, and that's actually bad. We lost three of them. So I may have to armor the AI, AI cores a little bit better. Uh, also, we lost all of our sound blocks, so Ratatosk can't talk to us anymore. But if we look at the damage level... Oh, well, we have to change tier... Um, this is tier's log rather than tier's status. Unfortunately, it's actually going to be Tyr died, so that's that's pointless. Never mind. I can't have Tyr tell us the systems because I let him die. I let him die. So even though this ship took just just a tremendous amount of bombardment from rockets, it's fully functional. Uh, I don't even think we lost a single engine. We may have lost some of our um, ro our uh, spinny bits. Yeah, yeah, spinny bits. That's a technical term. Now, let's go ahead and compare that to what happens when you fire on light armor, or even mixed light armor, heavy armor that's not composite. Does this thing have lights? Yeah, good, it does. So this side of the ship is all light armor. How do you think it will fare? Well, let's go ahead and start with an attack on the cockpit. This is double glass. And you can see that a rocket basically just destroys the double glass, but because the double glass is built at just the right distance away, we're still fully functional. Um, 
the the damage to the glass is enough to take a direct rocket hit, maybe even two direct rocket hits. So this is not a weak cockpit. It is simply not a strong cockpit. Now let's talk about light armor. This light armor here is actually concealing a battery, so if we fire... You can see that we punched holes right through the light armor, and we also probably destroyed the battery within. Let's see if we can get a better angle on that. Oh, nope, the battery is still around. Yep. Now, these are small ship rockets, so, I mean, small ship rockets aren't as strong as, as large ship rockets are, but you can see that we're taking just a huge, huge amount more damage. These are, these are pot shots rather than the sustained fire I was doing. If I was going to do the sustained fire on the back here, watch. Yeah, pretty much hold it. Cut right through the ship. So, that's the difference between... Oop, the vanguard's back there. That's the difference between uh, decent heavy armor and light armor. But even in some of these air... I think that I've damaged this ship beyond usability with that. That's obnoxious. I was going to go ahead and fire on the... Uh, on the on the parts of the ship that were just heavy armor, and now I can't show you that. They're not, they're not a whole lot better. Um, rockets do just demolish these ships. Now, if you're thinking about how this fares against capital ship weaponry, it actually does remarkably well. The railguns, the heavy ship railguns, will do exactly as much damage as it takes to blow away the, he the heavy armor and the wheel, but they will do no damage to the interior at all. Well, until a second shot goes through. The heavy rockets are basically the same thing, except that it really depends on exactly how they hit as to whether or not the concussive blast might take out some interior. Uh, elements. It, it, it depends. But in the end, this heavy armor is really, really effective. So, what I said earlier, it's a lot of fun to try and figure out the constraints of the game, to master the constraints of the game, and that's this heavy armor bit. Uh, I have figured out a good way to build heavy armor, I've made a ship that is remarkably durable, and uh, I also made a ship that has a role that has no purpose in the game. There are, will never be a use for a U-boat in Space Engineers. But despite that, it was a lot of fun to build this. It was a lot of fun to lay out the interior. Uh, and a lot of fun to figure out how people would live inside and how they would operate two drones and how you could lock two drones together into the rest of the ship. Um, as for the actual performance of the vessel, it is middling. Uh, it, it moves at a middling speed and it tilts at a middling rate. Uh, but it is backed up by a lot of really powerful assistance, AI assistance. So it actually performs pretty well when the heat is on, uh, and a big part of that is the fact that it has very few reactors and a lot of batteries, which is, I'm beginning to think, probably the best way to do things. Batteries are, are pretty light, uh, and you don't, you don't care if they get damaged. The only flaw with them is that you have to manage them, and if you've got Freya managing it for you, who cares? Well, shall we do a ram test? I think we might have enough power... In our, in our ship still. Yeah, we didn't lose any anything important. We still have all of our engines. Let's go ahead and do a ram test. Let's ram the... Uh... You know what? We should probably ram the other direction. Because this ship has no cockpit worth... Uh... The cockpit is completely undefended and already damaged. Let's go ahead and get into our... our larger vessel. Oh, I went the wrong way. This is the Vanguard. You can get it on the Steam Workshop if you'd like. You'll be able to get the uh, um, the Ghost Hunter as well when it's done, but I have to finish developing some of the AI programs it uses. I turned off the gravity in here because it was making my recording... I was standing at a tilt. So you can see how much more spacious this is. The AI uh, helpers on this ship are a lot more primitive. Alright, so there are a lot of things we can test out with this. For example, I can actually go ahead and fire on my ship and just show you how powerful these railguns are. Oh, this is going to fire into the light side of the ship. Um, yeah, this is like uh, a joke. Firing into the unarmored side of the ship will just punch straight through. It's uh, 
devastating. And in fact, it's so easy to punch through that we didn't even see any explosions or anything. It just went through. Well, let's go ahead and ram it. Back up a little bit first, otherwise... Um, it's going to be hard to ram it because I don't have a camera on the front. This was never really intended for ramming. But it was intended for moving fast. So, if we can get it to line up properly, I think that's... Oh! I didn't expect that to actually uh, damage my ship this badly. So, don't use the Vanguard to ram people. Noted. Oh, wow. We have no frames left. Come on. You can escape. Get out. Get out. Oh, no wonder I couldn't get out. The ship is stuck there. So if you were wondering how big the ship was, um, yeah, it's it's that big. But holy cow! <laughs> it was completely uh, rammed and absorbed. This is pretty funny, actually. I did not expect this to happen. I expected, um, I expected the ships to basically bounce off of each other because uh, the the ghost hunter is so much smaller; it shouldn't have any appreciable mass. But instead, it actually ripped out this whole area. And it's still burrowing through the ship. There it is, right there. <laughs> ah. Well, the gravity generator in the, uh, in the Ghost Hunter is still working. So it survived more or less on uh, more or less intact, right? Undamaged. Yeah. No problem. <laughs>